Hello folks, I am Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. I am back imaging and uh, as I said in my uh, header, I plan to image until I fall asleep. So uh, I'm doing the same thing I did the other night. Let's uh, the last two or three nights. That's uh, imaging Jupiter, Saturn. Um, and a deep space target. I've already forgotten what it is. Oh, the cave nebula. Cave nebula. We're just getting more data. I hope it's. I hope that's what it's doing right now. I set it in action, uh, and I haven't looked at it. Uh, so I hope it slewed to that part of the sky. Plate solved. Got the right filters. Focused and is taking images. Uh, I just said go. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It may be right where I left it. All right. Okay, we are outside. Uh, well, I'm not. It is uh, outside, and it's uh, currently we are on uh, Jupiter, and uh, scene looks to be pretty reasonable. And I am uh, excited about that. I am also guiding. I'll show you what's going on there. I have a guide star right here. And we're guiding just slightly under 1.0. We're at 0.84. Uh, it's okay. That's all right. I'll take it at 5,080 millimeter field, a field of view. That's pretty good. Uh, this is Saturn in my crosshairs. Uh-oh. We had a declination trip. The red lines are declination. Wonder what caused that. Ho-ho. Look at all the corrections to bring it back uh, to center. And then it's sending, went the other way, and now it's sending more corrections to bring it back. RA seems to be behaving itself, but deck went uh, 1.46 arc seconds in, uh, no, it went up to almost 9 arc seconds in, uh, so anyway, uh, let's head back outside and let's start an imaging session. Let's make sure this settles down. Or I'll just stop guiding because what I don't want are the sudden corrections in the middle of a guide because your target just jumps. An auto stacker has auto stacker kind of knows the gradual drifts, accommodates that really well. But when your planet's in one place and then it moves eight arc seconds uh, in another direction like uh, it's been hit with a ball bat then it doesn't like that all right i think we can go so um let's take uh, let's set up a capture session and let's do 20 saturns let's do 2000 frames and uh let's knock off uh, 20 of them and let's uh, have a 15 minute interval. Uh, this is I'm 15 minute, a 10 second interval uh, between uh, images. Uh, let me make sure. I, w I worked on focus. I can't get it any sharper than that. Hopefully post processing software will bring out some detail. But it doesn't look to be seen. It just looks to be my eyes and my ability to focus from this uh, computer. Uh, my telescopes are 35, 40 yards away. Um, upstairs in my home, they're outside, outstairs in the backyard. 
The room I'm in is the very front of the house, and they're in the very back corner. It's far away from me, not by design, but by where street lights wouldn't hit them, and where they had a clear 365 degree view of the night sky at about 20 degrees and up without trees. Yay. Here we go. We just started. We're down here capturing. Oh, we're going to stop this capture. We're going to have to make some changes. Uh, let's uh, drop the... Let's drop the exposure down to... To, let's go back down to 42 and then let's raise the gain up uh, too little too bright I'm watching my histogram here I want to be slightly to the left of that center line which we just about are or we are in all colors so uh, that's gonna work so let's go back uh, Oh, we're still capturing. I thought I stopped it. Well, I'm going to have to stop it. That'll be a disaster image. Uh, so we're going to cancel. Let's go back to capture. Start capture. Saturn 2000. Uh, we want 20. Now we're off. Now I said we need to go over and look here. Yeah, have we started. Uh, we're getting ready. Oh, we've already taken six images. <clears throat> uh, we're cooling the camera at minus 15 degrees Celsius. And that's below ambient. We are hot. It is a hot day in South Carolina. Outside right now, the temperature is 74 degrees. Humidity is 99%. And the dew point is 73. So whenever these two get collide, then automatically you've got water accumulating on the ground and on your kit so give it about an hour and my grass will be ringing wet it beats sprinkling uh, we have cold weather coming in tomorrow so let's see what it's looking like this is our ha let's get a good high stretch we've got some nice nebulosity down here uh, we've got some nebulosity in here that we can see in HA. Last night I imaged the same target and uh, we have about five hours in last night. We're going to get another, uh, well, we're going to get nine hours in over two nights and then tomorrow night I'll get another nine hours. So there will be 14 hours of exposure time. The O3 and the S2 is pretty, pretty bleak looking as it's coming in, but that's okay. I'm looking for this mean to come down as the target climbs in the uh, uh, climbs on the horizon. It's about 40 degree, 42 degrees uh, ALT over Spartanburg right now. But as it gets darker and people turn their lights off and we get away from the thermal rooftops, bouncing heat back up in the air, then I hope this drops. Last night it got down to 800 and something. Uh, but we did get 25 of each last night and uh, I want to do the same thing and then tonight I'm gonna go ahead and take some RGB stars um, I'll have plenty of time so I'm gonna take uh, 10 second exposures for red green and blue and I'm gonna take 20 each and then uh, I'll uh, process I'll dither those I'll dither everything I'll process these into an RGB image and I'll use Star Exterminator to extract the uh, stars. Thank you Russell Croman for that brilliant piece of software kit and I will extract the stars and I will uh, probably have to do very little because uh, they should be tight, sharp and colorful and unsaturated at 10 seconds. And then I will then process the HA and the O3 and S2. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Probably the Hubble palette. 
Um, 99% sure it'll be SHO. I'll map the S in the red channel, the H in the green channel, and the O3 in the blue channel. And then um, once I take that through dynamic background extraction, um, and I'll probably run MLT multilinear transform. I'm in PixInsight now doing this, and then from there, um, we'll do a photometric calibration on the color. Uh, I'll stretch it, and at that time, probably I'll remove the stars from the uh, Hubble image, and I'll just delete those. Well, I may put them in the bank and uh, compare them to my... Uh, uh, 10 second stars uh, I probably won't delete them until I know I'm not going to need them uh, and I don't think I will I haven't in images like this in the past but at any rate I've got space so I'll keep them until I get ready and then uh, I will uh, then process uh, the nebula only without stars in it and I'll do everything I'm going to do to it uh, the very last thing I'll probably probably do then is add the stars back into the image because I don't want the stars affected by noise reduction curves. Uh, I don't want the no, I don't want to inadvertently oversaturate the stars while I'm trying to lift colors out of the nebula. So I just per, prefer to leave the stars out of the image. And the very last thing I do is I'll package the image by putting it back together again like Humpty. Let's go back out and see what Saturn's doing. We're going to take 20 of Saturn, see what time it is, and then probably I better pay attention to what I'm doing here. Let's see. Oh, me. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, let me click on that. Now I can see any chat noise going on if anybody's got any questions. Uh, do, do. All right, what am I doing? Uh, All right, let's go ahead over and see Jupiter and uh, not Jupiter, Saturn. I'm going to do that all night. One of uh, one of our good friends was talking to me earlier today, and she was asking me if I was imaging Jupiter, and 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 of course I am, and. She brought up, that there is a correction in PhD2. Let me show you what just happened. See, there it went. Dag on it. And I don't know what for, uh, what AVI file that one was. But uh, that declination correction, or series of corrections, caused uh, this to jump. And then it brought it right back into the center, which is what guiding is supposed to do. Keep your target centered <sighs> but it just requires that when you get finished if you're guiding you have to blink through your TIFF files once auto stacker does its thing you have to blink through your TIFF files and if there's a, a lot of that going on just have to delete those files because Auto stacker doesn't know what to do with them. Just to, you're better off not guiding and just have a gradual drift, uh, which normally happens in declination if you're not well polar aligned. And sometimes you, it, what's happening in declination with mine is I got a ton of backlash, and the gears just stop because they really don't need to be turning 
uh, if you're correctly polar aligned, and I'm really pretty close to being, I'm under one arc minute, we're uh, polar aligned, so we're pretty good. I mean, I'm in good shape polar alignment wise, but if it, as a result of seeing or as a result of the mount needing to get a correction it gets it starts sending a correction it might not move due to backlash until it finally does move and then it's a big takeoff uh, and then it finally settles down now that's what I think is going on under the hood that's my gut feeling I'm going to leave you guys watching this for about uh, two minutes. I'm going to go down and get my coffee. I made it, and then I forgot to bring it. Be right back. Okay, good coffee. Where to put it? I have no room to put the coffee. How did I get myself in this bind? Okay. The coffee's in a place where it's probably going to get turned over. And if it does, it's going to go all over my keypad. But it's a gamble I'm worth taking. Okie dokie. We are imaging uh, Saturn Live. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to some images I took last night. We're going to process one or two of them. And... Uh, last night and the night before last and we're going to process a couple of them real quick and we'll continue i'm taking 20 uh videos they're avi files and they're 2000 frames long and i am going to process those in auto stacker probably i'll process those in pip first and uh, Pip does a good job of doing an alignment, selecting the best reference frame, and then cropping the background so that what you have is Saturn for the most part, and a little background. Then I bring them into AutoStacker, and AutoStacker quickly does its thing, and it's so much easier on AutoStacker because of the work Pip does. But Pip takes some time too. Combine the time of Auto Stackert and PIP, and it's probably not much difference than just using Auto Stackert in and of itself. But uh, Auto Stackert doesn't crop into the image and search the image for the best reference frame, which is one of PIP's strengths. This is the I don't know if I have it on this computer, but I have it on another one. So what I'm going to do is venture over there now. Well, I was. We're going back and forth. Let's see. How can I bring up uh, their splash top? We want to go to my workstation. And let's go back to where... Let's see. Let's go back to uh, the planets and okay we're on the workstation and so what we want to do is bring up registax 
and last night, no, uh, let's see, this afternoon, I uh, ran 10 images of Saturn that I took on the 19th. I ran those through Aldo Stackard, and so what I'm going to do is process one or two of those right now, and let's go ahead and select. Let me see how many I've done. I've done four, so I need the fifth one. So I'm going to go to one, two, three, four. So I'm on this one right here, and I want to uh, flip and I need to move this 270 degrees by the way I did rotate the camera and I need, I need to color balance it I'll just use auto white balance uh, I don't think I'm gonna run a histogram and well let's go ahead and stretch it but I'm not going to uh, increase the uh, white point any okay so let's get rid of this and this and then I'm going to load a scheme that I did on the 18th I like a lot and finish processing this image and it's working on it and it's done. So there's our Saturn and we're going to apply all those changes to all of it by clicking do all and now we're going to save it because I'm going to run these through Windu posts and derotate so we want to go to we're going to call this the fifth one Saturn number five and Save it. I don't know why, why everything's hanging up. I do know why I'm alive. While it's hanging up, let's go back out to, uh, this is doing all right. I haven't checked guiding, have no idea how we're guiding. We're at 0.67. So guiding is going okay, particularly for a wide field. That's really, really good. And my RA and my deck are reasonably close, so my stars should be round. It's only when they get um, at odds. One's 30, one's 80, or one's 120, 1.2, and one's at 0.4 that you get oblong stars. You can get oblong stars even with a good total RMS if these things are out of whack. If you've got more deck problems than RA or vice versa. I did that too. Uh, okay, well that's fine. So we know we're gathering usable data in HA. And so we can uh, move on. These are 240 second images. Uh, I'll get 75 in all. I'll do another 25 tonight and then I'll get 25 tomorrow night, clouds willing. And I'll do the same for all three. So um, when I'm done, I'll have 225 images in, in HA03 and S2 total. And then I'll have 60 images in RGB. So it'll be a long processing um, of data in, in uh, PixInsight. And it's one of those things where I'll run it all night. Because it'll take several hours. Uh, I'll put it on when the clouds come is when I process this stuff and uh, I can't image, but when I can image, I image every night I can. All right, let's go see if Jupiter's, or Saturn is still in the loop. There, it's the wrong one. Oh, we're gonna have to go find it now. Why is this thing creating this? Uh, let's see, we want Astro Camera One. All right, now we're cooking. Okay, there's Saturn. It's got a little drift going. We'll make a correction. I'm gonna 
see where we are in our 20 AVI Go quest. We're just about two-thirds of the way there capturing. We're at 1500 frames. I'll be able to increase the frame rate with Jupiter when we head over there because it's so much brighter and I'll be able to dumb down the gain so having this high of a gain creates a grain in your image okay we've got eight remaining so we've done 12 and uh, so we have eight remaining and then we'll head over to Jupiter and start running Jupiter before we do that pop. Why won't you let me go between... Okay, we want to go to the workstation. Alright. Now where's the workstation? Uh, not ready to... Let's put, it, let's put that there. And uh, let's move. Okay, this is camera one, camera two, camera three. Alright. Okay, what I want to do is quickly put that down, and I want to bring up WinGPose, and I want to select under Program Celestial Body Jupiter. Well, we can look at Saturn first because we're imaging it, and let's see what Saturn's going to look like right now in real time. Okay. That's how it's going to look. That's the angle. And so uh, I will be uh, running those Saturn images through this software called Windju Post in order to derotate. The fact that Saturn and Jupiter rotate once every, oh, about nine hours for one, 10 hours for the other and change whereas we rotate once every 24 that fast rotation makes it impossible to take real long AVI files and collect a lot of frames because the rotating would create a, bur a blur you wouldn't get sharpness so what you have to do is derotate it and that's what this software does uh, let's go to program let's see what Jupiter's doing because I hope maybe we got a great red spot to play around with. So we're going to go to Program, Celestial Body, Jupiter, and then we're going to go to Tools, Ephemerides, and there's two. Ah, oh, right now we've got a. No, we don't. Right now we have a red spot. Okay. And let's see. In 10 minutes, it will have rotated there. Okay, so we're going to get. This is the giant red spot, the great, great red spot. And so we'll be able to get that in a few minutes and we'll be able to see it because when you post the tool Ephemerides, we'll let you do that. Pretty cool. Okay, let's, uh, Let's go back to this and see where we are. We've got 2,000 frames. I'm ready to go to Jupiter. Six remaining, so that means we've taken 14. I'm going to stop it. 14 is enough. So, let me bring up my planetarium software and let's find Jupiter here. There it is right here. And let's stop guiding. Oh, another one of those... We're awfully low to the horizon, too, so I can blame it, some of that on that. All right, let's head over to uh, Cartes de Sul. We're on Jupiter. Let's slew there. So we're leaving Saturn. There's the telescope moving. And if we go outside and let it crank back up, We'll see this jump over here. So we're now on Jupiter, and this telescope's imaging uh, the cave. Caldwell 9, SH2, 155. 
and that's what we're imaging okay so let's uh, now go to uh, let's start guiding back up and let's actually I need to go back to Saturn and sync it so let me do that now I should have done that before so uh, need this software here Saturn and SLU the disadvantage of being inside and not being able to look through a finder scope you're going to see that in a minute all right let me because this is my finder scope now so what I have to do is uh, nudge it until I find it and it's usually uh, I don't know how far we're going to have to go with this. But not too far. I'm gambling right now. I'm also playing. But I got ahead of myself. Had a when I get on Saturn, I'll sync it, and you'll see why it's important to do that. Oh, I don't want to go outside and center Saturn. too hot here it comes <clears throat> finally come on Saturn I need you in the crosshairs coffee time Let's see, let's go down. Let's go over. Uh, now we gotta go up. Get carried away. Now we gotta go north. Let me slow this thing down, go down to one time sidereal. Alright, let's bring up Shark Cat because I need to go east. There it is. East, 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 east. Okay. I'm going to go back to <coughs> uh, my software and I'm going to go <coughs> telescope, sync. It's going to say confirm that it's pointed to Saturn. It is. And then when I open up my hand controller, <clears throat> you'll see I have one sync point. And if you look, uh, it's right here. This is where uh, my sync point is. So I am going to, there's two of them I got picked, Jupiter and Saturn. And this is my sync point. So we're on it. Now, in theory, uh, don't do that to me scoot over so now in theory when I go back to uh, Jupiter or go to to Jupiter and we nudge to go over there it should be in my uh, guide scope which is 60 millimeter. It's about 240 millimeter fo focal length. So it should, shouldn't be too far off if it is. All right, let's bring up, uh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> so we have uh, to go west and let's make this move a little quick. Two times sidereal. See all the moons of Saturn. 
spot of Saturn of Jupiter. I can't keep anything straight, but there they are. All right, north. Let's dumb this down to one time sidereal. And now we need to go east. Let's go on out and wait for it to come down. Here goes east. And south. On the 26th of on the 26th of September, Jupiter will be the closest it's going to be in 59 years. All right, see how bright it is compared to Saturn because I haven't changed the exposure. So let's uh, drop the uh, gain down to, let's say, 250. And then let's bring this down, to increase the frame rate. And uh oh, scenes got bad. Look at the scene. That's bad. We might wait it out before we start imaging. But here's the great red spot, and I'm going to try to focus a little better. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring this up a little closer. And let's try to start going in. Well, let's go out about five steps. It's hard to focus when the scene isn't good. But you see how wavy it looks? It's kind of like when heat's coming off the highway and you see that unstable air well we have some unstable air between my camera sensor and Jupiter and it comes and goes scene does we might have poor scene now and then in 15 or 20 minutes it can clean its act up um, I'm gonna go out another I'm going out five steps at a time to see if I can tell if it's any better and I can't. So let's start moving, racking it back in. I'm down here in the bottom right and the position right now is at 1060 steps. Each step of the focuser is just a micro measurement. So we're not moving this thing if I was if you were outside looking at the focuser you couldn't tell it was moving it's better we needed to go in I think we're right on probably as close as oh yes okay we're better bingo let's go back out all right <clears throat> I would say we're as good as we're going to get right now. I'm going to go ahead and start guiding. Uh, I hope it doesn't guide on one of the, moon, one of the moons of uh, Jupiter because when, it, when you elect the multi-star, it will pick a star. And, uh, and I hope they don't, it doesn't pick one of the moons because it gives you erratic guiding if you do. Oh, good. All right, it found a star and it didn't pick one of these moons. So, so we're off and guiding. Uh, and I'm going to kind of wait the scene out a little bit, I think. Why don't we, whatever, why don't we just, we have nothing else to do. So why don't we just go ahead and start a capture session. Uh, scene is bad. Let's make these 3,000 frames. And... Uh, Let's work on 20 of these, too, and uh, let's get started on these. Better is good now as never, so here we go. We got the great red spot, and hopefully I'll be able to 
go over to it when I click on this and click on it again. Yes. So here's a real time view of Jupiter under when you post. And uh, this is the great red spot. This is what we're looking at. And uh, so it is, it is. This is a terrific software. And um, as soon as uh, these nights uh, cloud up, and I think that's going to be Sunday night, I think, I think I can image up until Sunday night. I think uh, we have rain coming. And so I'll be covering up the telescopes. But, uh, and then we have about three days or three nights of not really good weather and then it gets really good again. That's long range and you know how that goes. But I'm gonna take those days and I'm gonna process some of this data and I'm gonna do a, a, uh, a tutorial on uh, the software on how to use it to derotate, how to use the Firamirides, how to plan your observations, uh, how to uh, derotate your images, and if you have, if you take RGB, uh, if you shoot a mono camera, I'm shooting a color camera right now, but if you shoot a mono camera, which I, I also do, how to derotate your images in that, in that scenario. Uh, how important it is if you're using, uh, when you load an image, and uh, I'm gonna load, uh, let me see if I can find a Jupiter to load since we already got Jupiter up here. Uh, it's been processed, I know I do. Uh, let's see, planetary on the 19th, we did a Jupiter. Have we processed any of those? I don't want you open. Well, it's not gonna open, so. I don't know, we're clocking now, I'm not ready to, uh, all right, let's try it again. Okay, we don't have a TIFF Jupiter yet. I haven't done anything with them, evidently. Let's see if I've done anything with the 18th. Uh, I, I did, they're not all Saturn. Okay, let's go to keeping 10%. Here's a Jupiter. All right, when you open one of these uh, image TIFF files, uh, you want to make sure that the time and the day has will be populated right here. So this was taken at, uh, let's see, 8, 9, and 9, 10. Yeah, this was taken at 10.53 because they use universal time and we're four hours uh, under uh, daylight savings time. We're four hours uh, off. So it's actually not 153, but it's 1053. So I took this at 1053 on the, on, uh, no, why is this showing? Didn't take it on, uh, well, we got a bad, that's crazy. Let's see if it lines up. Outline frame, automatic detection. It did that, huh? Let me go back. Okay, this should have, that's about what time I took it, but uh, this image is, uh, was taken on the 19th. Let me bring up another one. Tell you what, I just worked on these Saturns, so let's, uh, let's go back to program, celestial body, Let's try Saturn. Let's make sure it comes up. Let's go to Tools, Ephirmes. There's Saturn. Okay, great. Let's go back to uh, recording. Let's do an image measurement. Let's find... Uh, that's one of my Saturns there. Let's open an image. And so you, you can see that that was on the tw 9, uh, 18 on the 22nd at 135, which is 1035. That was taken same day. But uh, the other one didn't make sure you check the days. Uh, so let's, um, 
Let's load another uh, image and let's go to now we don't want that one uh, open an image let's go to not the 18th let's go to the ones I'm doing now and that's the 19th right 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 say yes say yes PC Oops. I hate Windows I'm a Mac guy so we did the 19th Saturn 2 uh, these are okay these are ready for when you post okay so this is 9 18 one, Somehow or another, my date's getting screwed up. That's what I wanted to show you because you can't have that happen. If it does, you got to manually enter it, and I'll show you how you do that when I teach this, when I do a tutorial on it. But uh, let's go back to SharpCap. When you are setting up SharpCap, uh, and go down, when you set up, go to File, let's see cancel we got 17 remaining I'll show you now go to sharp cap settings uh, and under uh, file names it's going to say create when you post compatible file names make sure you have that checked uh, use UTC make sure these are checked kiddo and then I click apply and then it will be that information will be embedded in it and it won't be erased in auto stacker if you use castrator now castrator will erase it then you just have to go to you have to go to your uh, let's see this was the 19th you gotta go find your file and I don't know what I'm Saturn and you've got to uh, say pull out your image and it'll have the time and the, the day and you just have to manually put that in and that's just a pain so you don't want to have to do that if you can help it and you have to put it in so that it will know uh, how to derotate all right, let's go back and capture. It said we had uh, 13 to go, so let's start capture. Uh, we're doing, I don't think I put that in, Jupiter. Let's just go ahead and do another 20, 3,000. The more the better. So we're now imaging Jupiter. Center that. And... Uh, I have it zoomed in real close at 200%. We can go back out to, uh, say, 100%. And we're guiding. I wonder how bumpy that is. Ah, it's terrible. 1.62. But I know the scene went crazy, so I'm not surprised. And the guiding on my other one's probably not much better. But it's now nah, we're still at 7.4, but we were at 4.4.74. Okay, the guide, let's look and see what uh, is happening with uh, this one. Let's open up Sequence Generator Pro and let's hide our sequence data and here's the cave nebula we'll do a high stretch on it and so that's happening right now we're taking some ha and uh we've got 10 left in ha and then we're going to spin the it's going to spin automatically for me to 03 and uh, we'll pick up 244 minute 03s until we get 50. Then after we get to narrow band, we're going to go to RGB and get some uh, 10 second exposures, 20 each for the stars. That's the plan for tonight. The cave nebula. 
and what I hope to get is let's go to Astroban and I'll sign in and let's look at Caldwell 9 our that's the cave and SH2-155 is also the cave and so uh, I don't know how the Eastern Veil got in here but uh, here's the cave in uh, mono and this is kind of what we're seeing we got a different field of view his pixel cells about a pixel mine 2.31 and he's 2.32 so this is about uh, same pixel scale and I wish they'd put their gear in here uh, Anyway, I'm going to go check something very quickly. Uh, let's go back. I think I want to search SH2-155 and uh, see. Okay. Ah, here's what I want right here. This is what I want. And this would be the Hubble palette, SHO. So th those are the kind of the colors I'm shooting for. Um, let's see what he did. He doesn't tell us. Shame on him. One thing I will do when I put my images up is I will... Uh, here's another Hubble palette. Alrighty. He used a 132 millimeter. He took S2HA03. He used a Starlight Express, so he used a CCD camera. And he's got 15 hours of total integration time. He took 1200 seconds. I'm not doing that. I'll get 15 hours. I'll get uh, five almost five each night. I'll get close to 15 hours, but it will be uh, much shorter exposures, not counting my stars. But that's also because he's using a CCD camera. CMOS camera, I can run the gain up on that and uh, get by with shorter exposures. All right, let's go look for some more narrow band. Bingo. And here's a good one. Ah, here's what I'm looking for. Okay, in fact, this was image of the day. This is what I want. All the dust lanes. That's pretty cool right there. And let's see what he did. He had a TAC 85, and I have a uh, 70 millimeter. Uh, he's got a, six, a 690 QSI. So uh, you see his image scale is 3.89 so I've got a smaller Emmy scale I need to dither my I mean I need to dither and uh, drizzle because I'm so uh, undersampled and he used HA03 and S2 he took wow uh, of course that's another CCD camera he has to take he's taking 1800 seconds I guess that's, that scares me to death. I just can't even imagine that. So he's got total integration time. Where's that at? Do, 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 do. Uh, does it compute it? It should. Um, oh, here it is. 28 hours. Golly. What an investment. 28 bloody hours of that. All right, I better get outside and make sure my telescopes haven't gone somewhere let's do a high stretch and 
See, I can see all the dust here, and that's just 240 sec That's 240 seconds of exposure time. So when I say dust, nebulosity that's around here, I know it's there. And uh, now this is in the HA, and this is the best signal. The O3 and the S2 don't show real good. Uh, but when we stack all those together, we'll have that blue color. I've been here, done this one before. So that's what we're doing. Now I do think I took 300 seconds, I added another minute, but that ain't gonna make a big difference. 15 hours is 15 hours. Whether you take one 15 hour image, 15 one hour images, or 150 four, uh, four minute images like I'm doing, or 210, or 225 is with another uh, 75 which is what I'm doing so all right let's go see what Jupiter's doing oh that's wind you post and uh, let's go see what Jupiter is doing let's see we need to do that again and we don't need to see the guide camera Jupiter guiding's not any better uh, and there's our Jupiter we got 16 left remaining out of 20 and I I think I had seven the last time, so we've got uh, quite a few already in the bank. I'm going to stay with Jupiter, though. Uh, I don't know if you caught me or heard this when I mentioned it earlier, but uh, on the uh, 26th or 27th of September, I think it's the 27th. It's either 26 or 27. Jupiter will be the closest that's going to be in uh, in a long time. It's going to be another 59 years before it's as close as it's going to be on the 26th of September. It'll also be close on the 27th. But when you go out and look at it, uh, like a member of our astronomy club mentioned in one of our forums, it's big and bright now, and it is. It's impressive. Now the scene has gotten a lot better. Why isn't my guiding? Let me see if my guiding is yeah, 160. I'm going to go from one second to uh, two and a half. I'm going to clear this out. Um, my advice to PhD users is you might run your RA aggression higher, but my advice is to not fool with these. I have spent hours playing around with these, trying to improve my guiding when it was a scene condition problem. Leave those alone. Run your guiding assistant for 10 minutes. First, calibrate on a star close to the celestial equator around the meridian uh, and so you want to go to the south south and right around the meridian about close to zero deck as possible find just just bring up software like this uh, you don't have to find a star there's stars everywhere but go to the south and go to the west side uh, don't go to the east side because you'll have to cross the meridian. You might still be running your guiding, but pick a star like right here. Let's see, where are we? Uh, all right. Well, actually, Saturn's almost zero deck right now, but uh, this would be uh, pick that star, and that is plus six degrees zero deck, and that would work. But if you want to come down, find that this star is going to be too low. It's going to be minus, well, that's, that's a good star, minus one. So just pick this star and slew your telescope to it. It isn't going to land on that star. It's okay. We want to get the general, we want to get the telescope and the guide camera in the part of the sky where 
running your calibration is going to work the best. It's going to work the best. So it'll find a star and just start uh, running your uh, calibration, calibrating your uh, PhD. And then after it's calibrated, check and see if you've got a good uh, right angle. And if your, uh, uh, your individual uh, uh, shots up and down the right angle are on the line, and look at the difference between your RA and your deck numbers. They ought to be really close, like 12 something or 13 something. You know, they ought to be really, really close. And then, if you got a good calibration, then go up to the tools and run the guiding assistant for 10 minutes. You'll get you something to eat. You'll take a break and run it for 10 minutes. Don't worry about where it's going. Your lines, RA, and deck may shoot all over the place. Forget it. It just wants to find out what kind of scene conditions you have and then it's going to recommend setting your min minimum move minimum mo and let it take its recommendations and do its backlash uh, recommendation adjustment and once you've done that then don't touch any of those other things that's my advice after fretting over this for years and trying to figure out how to improve this i just take what the guiding assistant tells me and uh you can vary your hysteresis to kind of smooth out these lines because this is an anticipation algorithm that if it sees this is doing this over and over again, it kind of anticipates it and sends a pulse before it has a chance to do it. And uh, so you might want to increase that, but it also can overshoot, so you don't want to do it too much. Uh, can it amazing how brilliant the people who wrote this software have to be to do that it's hard enough to explain in or for me to understand it to explain it okay let's see we're at 1900 frames i don't know which one we're on but we're capturing i see where we have two people watching and i just say hello to you and thanks for doing that watching if you have any questions I may not have the answers I'll go look them up and put them on the comments it's a good thing it's a good good thing that I did not have this equipment when during my pre-retirement years when I worked every day for a living or I would have been fired while well, I ran my own business. I would have ran it into the ground because I would have been up so many nights imaging that I would have come in looking like a, uh, a dead drunk. So. But now I still do a lot of sports photography, but it is uh, hours that I can set for myself. I can take a gig or not. I can go and do it if I want. I don't have to. It's up to me. I feel like it, I will. If I don't, it's okay. This is the great red spot. And we know it's working its way across the face of Jupiter because we went over to Winchipos which is right here and we went up and selected Jupiter and then we went to tools and selected the Ephyramirides and we saw where Jupiter the great red spot is moving across the screen as it is with mine in real this is real time right now okay uh, I'm still bummed out as to why this image lost uh, this that's right. What am I doing? This is the right image. It's 9-18-2022. Why 
what was I doing a while ago when I loaded this image that I thought this date was way off? It's right, right on target. Hmm. I don't know. At any rate, this is one I took that I'm going to run through Windsor Post. Here's another one. And when I go down to uh, when we go down to uh, let's go over to adjustment and outline the frame. Uh, there it is. You can use your uh, left arrow, right arrow. To center this into what the bands you want that to match up, and then your page down makes it smaller, page up makes it larger. In rotates it in and P, so you can rotate it uh, if you're not lined up, P goes the other direction. But you need to center your planets. Uh, each one of them so that when you derotate uh, it will take your date and it will know how to uh, it will know how to uh, time it with what Saturn really was doing at that time by using the information from the Ephemerides. It's really cool stuff. Free. Free software. So there's our great red spot. And we're about to find out how many we have left. We're taking 3,000 frames and we're down to, we, we have 11 remaining out of 20. And so, good. While that's working, let's head over to our uh, cave nebula. We're still on, what time do we have a meridian flip? Let's go to planning tools. Not for a while. 12.25. I'll be in bed. We're currently at 62 degrees. <clears throat> we have a, a waning crescent moon. It's going to rise at 2.51. I'll have the majority of my imaging done by then. <clears throat> 3 o'clock. Because I have three hours and 49 minutes, say four, let's say four, let's say five hours left, counting dithering and focusing time, because we're going to have to focus through RGB and O3 and S2. So one, each of these is an, an hour. So one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours will put me at three o'clock, and I'll be done and it rises at roughly three o'clock so the moon is not going to bother me with my rgb images uh if it was what i would do is i would stop this sequence and i would just go ahead and bump up the rgb i would move them up the order of priorities and just i should have knocked them out right away just got them over with and then gone on into narrow band poor planning but one of the advantages having Sequence Generator Pro's planning tools is that um, you can start and stop. I want to take the stop off because uh, I'm going to go to about five o'clock. And uh, so you can accomplish a lot by. Uh, You don't want to image into dawn, which is 6.05, which is about right here, or you will get the light. The sky meter goes from 19.5 to starts dropping about 20 points about every, I don't know, just it almost drops before your eyes until uh, it's flooded with light. I don't have great skies. I'm in Bartle 6. I run, my best scene is about 19.5 in sky meter. 
probably now at this hour of the night, still really early, lights are on all over Spartanburg. People are in their cars, their lights are on. And um, houses, lights are on. So uh, about one o'clock, two o'clock, the, the 19, I'm probably closer to 18, nine, not 19 right now. And then it may go up as high as 19, five. <clears throat> just, just not always gets that high. And that's not good. That's just what I have. So is it important to have a sky meter? I don't think so. Uh, I uh, have a software uh, program. Uh, that's a weather program. Everybody ought to have it. Just so uh, you go up. These are weather weather programs I use. Um, this is where I am right now. And that's why we've got such good skies. Uh, I'll find it. Meteo, Meteo Blue is a good one. But uh, that's not the one I'm talking about. Is it Metacheck? I think it's Metacheck. Nope. Then it's clear outside. Yeah. Clear outside. You type in your, uh, your uh, longitude and latitude. And it will tell you that I'm at 9. My sky quality is 9.42. Class Bartle 6. And it will uh, it'll pretty much nail your sky meter reading because I don't think I'm that high right now, but that's pretty much my sky. And if you put your information in, that's going to be pretty much your sky. It's called clear outside. And it's great because it shows me that tonight my total uh, skies are pretty much without anything. And then if I go into tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, wait a minute, let's do, uh, let's center, no, we're at 11 o'clock at night, so, now tomorrow night I do have some clouds, I didn't know that, this is pretty accurate too, by the way, the next night I'm good, well, tomorrow night I won't be live, then, uh-oh, then Saturday night is not good, uh, Sunday's not good. Monday gets better. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I think, are going to be pretty good. Yeah, great. Lordy. So, I'm going to have some downtime. I'll be working on some images. Uh, this is another good software program that I have on my phone, iPhone, as well as uh, uh, it pretty much gives you about anything and everything you want. I also want to see what the sun's doing because I am a solar image in, during the day and uh, if it's worth it. Uh, see, this is four minutes old and I am, okay. There's some activity here and activity here, but I want activity plus rim activity. I like to see the solar flares and there isn't much going on in the way of solar flares, so I probably won't image tomorrow the sun. I better get back outside and see what I got uh, in the way of a... There we go. So there's Jupiter. A live view from my backyard. And that's what my backyard looks like right now. The cameras are turning on. And so they just did. This one that I have covered is the solar telescope and uh, mount. This is what I use for imaging the sun. It does look like my backyard's all lit up, but that's all infrared light now, right? Out in front here is a street light, and you can see it lights up the neighborhood. This is a very sensitive camera. And then this towel, this is a towel, and it covers up two laptops. The laptop is plugged into each telescope, 
I use Pegasus Ultimate Power Boxes to uh, so I only have two wires coming out of the kit a data wire and a power wire and uh, I use AC power from my home and uh, the data cable is plugged into um, each one has its own computer Astro 1 and Astro 2 and then I'm way this is my home and on this side it's two stories and so I'm way in the front on the far end uh, I'm as far away from these telescopes but my Wi-Fi without an extender has no problems picking up both of these notebooks our laptops so that's why I can sit upstairs in my home and I use I don't like team viewer had lots of problems with team viewer so I uh, use splash top business and it has a modest cost to it but it's uh, very reliable and let me see I'll find uh, see if I can find it uh, so it must be under the uh, other one yep there it is this is the uh, graphics user interface and this is Astro 1 that's the first laptop this is Astro 2 the second one I usually have a Vixen on it not the stellar view and this has the Smith Cassegrain then the one that I image the Sun with that laptops behind me and that's uh, I just call it planetary and then I have one that has that I'm processing that's this one right here that's sitting right by me uh, that's workstation 4 and this is my Mac I mean my yeah this is my Big Mac Big Mac sounds like food Big iMac now, it's real easy to set up and it's real easy to connect and it says it's Oh, it wants me to take out the new thing. I don't want to take it. I'm fine with this. I did get the splash top for business version because you have a lot more tools to work with. And uh, so there's other software that works real well too that's free. I know there is. I just, this works and I'm not changing. So it is what it is. Uh, so this is a Saturn that uh, let's open up another Saturn let's see let's go to this one body it's going to be Saturn now let's go to uh, PC uh, da, 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 da. all right no I don't want to come back Jupiter that's what I want Oh, that's right. I didn't process any of the AVI files. Well, I wanted to see some of them that I took yesterday when I was online. I just haven't done anything with them. Let's go back to the 17th. Surely I processed S. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it says the 18th. Uh, I need to go to program celestial body Jupiter. Then I need to open this image back up again. Uh, I need to shut this. E for Mirrenes. Now, the 
What's up with that? Oh, I still got the... Uh, well, I'm just going to close the whole thing down. Wouldn't you pose? Get rid of that. Okay, close it down. When in doubt. Uh, shut the whole thing down, Ed. All right, now let's start when you post back up. I opened it twice. Why? Because I clicked twice. Program, and we want to have Jupiter. Let's make sure if your immunity shows Jupiter. All right, it does. Close. Now let's go to recording image measurement. Yes, let's find Jupiter and open either one. There we go. One neat thing about setting up Jupiter is that when you go over to adjustment and you uh, take outline frame, you can go automatic detection and it will automatically, uh, I want the additional graphics and it will put all of the bands in so that you can line it up so that, uh, uh, for example, I need to make it a little smaller probably go up a little bit go down to make the bands you notice that I uh, I gotta make it uh, bigger Uh, it's going to probably be something like that. Oh no. Let's go see if uh, we're close to being finished with our this. Uh, we're just starting this uh, ABI file. The great red spot is working its way around Jupiter. Amazing. It is amazing that we're uh, working with consumer grade telescopes and cameras and mounts. And I'm in my, all set up in my backyard, and I'm able to light this up and take pictures of it. Hmm. Might be uh, already changing filters over here. No, nope, we're still at HA. Forty seconds left. And I'll show you what happens when uh, let's see we've got uh, four minutes so let's go back here and see uh, when this ends how many more we've got or how many we have left of this and while I'm thinking about it well I'll miss it if I better pay attention talking to myself again in fact to do these videos you have to talk to yourself there's nobody else here my wife's downstairs watching the call, call the midwife she's been binging on that okay we've got three remaining and I will have 20 of these yay now let's go over to go back here and watch what happens when we take our final image we have 231 seconds and what will happen is that we will have a filter change the filter wheel will be spun around to 03 and then an automatic focus will take place because I have it set up 
that uh, under focus, under um, use autofocus set, that I focus uh, on every filter change and I usually focus on every two degree. Uh, I hope I loaded the right profile every two degree uh, temperature change. And so uh, autofocus on filter, autofocus before the sequence starts. And glad I saw that. Let me uh, sequence. Um, let me put this back where it belongs. And let's go up to seek our file, save sequence as a profile. And the profile is going to be the 1600 camera plus 70T plus Atlas Pro mount uh, in an 80 reducer. So that is my default profile for this kit right now. I'm about ready to take it off and put the Vixen 625mm uh, ED81S on because we're imaging the moon on October the 1st. It's International Image the Moon Night and I've been uh, uh, part of the NASA Image the Moon and the Astronomical Society of the Pacific Image the Moon adventure so I'm going to be streaming the moon with two different telescopes and that stream's going to run through the NASA website that's having this inter international observe the moon night thing going on all over the world so that's going to be pretty interesting I did that with the uh, solar eclipse back in June that was fun got rained on had to run outside and shut things down out of the out of the blue had clear skies and then one of those South Carolina thunderstorms came rolling in and you have to have an, uh, you have to have these observation cameras and you have to look from time to time because if you live in the south because you never know what's going to happen we have varmints that run around like rabbits chipmunks squirrels Look at all the things that you'll see flying around. Two. Where uh, the telescope is uh, getting closer and closer to the zenith, and the uh, the weights are rising, and they're going to get so high, and then it's going to flip. And the telescope will be on the east side shooting west instead of the west side shooting east. <clears throat> and the software is set up so that it's automatically going to do that. I just go to... Oh, uh, we're changing filters. It happened. I forgot all about it. So it changed to 03. Now it's focusing. And we'll watch it run its focus routine. By the way, with the HA filter, we were at 0.93 half flux radius, which is good. But Sequence Generator Pro, this acquisition software, shuts the guider. You don't want to guide while you're focusing. It may send a correction and then your stars look woo, out of focus. So what it'll do is it it racks the telescope uh, out. Uh, I th I'll have to look, but I think it racks it out 60 steps. So you get a defocused image and it takes a picture and it calculates the half flux radius, which is an average of all these stars it's measuring. I uh, also set my focus routine to crop 5% of the image out because any stars out here are usually not really round anyway by virtue of just the optics so I need to make change that probably to 10 percent 
So it takes a picture and then it racks it in about 10 steps. And it takes another picture and it keeps racking it in until it gets to a point that it's going to rack it now. Um, it's going to rack it back to the starting point. Then it's going to go further in uh, until it defocuses. So it will ultimately uh, defocus and start moving towards focus, focus, focus. And then when it thinks it's reached its best point, it'll start going. They'll continue to rack it in and uh, it'll, it'll form a V, as you will see. So right now it's suggesting that uh, 8,076 steps would be where the focuser should find a half flux radius of one with this O3 filter and the quality of this particular uh, location would be around 100%. So it's changed it slightly. Now we're at 1.8 and the quality rating is around 98%, but it's now defocusing by racking in from the best, uh, I think it was, uh, what I don't remember what they were. So now we're getting this V curve and where there's an intersection here, this is where it's going to be determined that we have the absolute best to focus that this filter under this temperature of telescope and ambient uh, is set stepwise and it keeps focusing in to defocus and you can see the stars are getting gradually out of focus more each time it takes a picture. It may take it two more. It'll take another one then it'll take a validation frame to validate quality estimation at 8055 is 97 as long as it's above the 90 i'll go with it if it goes below 90 i'll run it again that's all scene related to when these stars are moving your uh, mount can't correct for moving stars due to scene so that's why guiding's bad and your focuser can't account for twinkling stars. It took a validation. Fo oh, sorry. So it's recommending 8,054 steps with the half flux. It will be better than that. And so it's counting down. It'll shut it off and then it'll start uh, guiding back up. Running a dither right now. It tells you what it's doing down here. Now it's starting auto guider, auto guider and it's going to let it settle. And once it starts guiding, now it started imaging, so we are now imaging our first O3. And we have three hours and 29 seconds left. <clears throat> That's one of the main reasons why I probably took five minutes. And so we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of focusing time to factor into our time. And then we dither between images which takes at least 10 seconds add on to the uh, 240 sometimes 15 seconds to settle the guider sometimes longer so uh, it just depends again on scene so you got to add to all of these images the dither time so three hours and 29 minutes you might as well add another hour you may need more I may need more to your imaging time. Well, we should be done over on the other one. Should have finished. And yep, we're finished. We're now previewing. It ran its course. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start another capture. Uh, this time, scene's gotten better. I'm going to do 2,000 frames. And uh, I'm going to change this title to 2000 because then it'll be easy for me to separate. Uh, it'll put it in another folder. It'll be easy for me to separate the 3000 from the 2000. So, yeah, scene's gotten better. 
Jupiter settled down a lot. The great red spot continues to travel. And uh, let's see one other thing here real quick. Uh, let's bring up the Ephir Emirides. And let's do real time. So in real time, Jupiter's red spot's right here. And in real time, my red spot's right there too. You can tell that I'm uh, repositioned my camera. It was way out of whack. But I did. Bingo. This is the north. Northern pole. Southern. Every year when I image Jupiter or Saturn or Mars, I uh, kind of get used to it but when I first start and the stuff gets coming in, the images that start getting some clarity, I just get kind of giddy over it. Just amazing. Look how clear it's gotten just shortly after. Yeah, this is seen as much better. I can see even some detail in the band. So that's these are going to look good. You don't have to take as many if you can keep a larger percentage. Uh, but when seeing is bad, you need five, six, ten thousand. And then you can take a smaller percentage of them, and hopefully, even in the bad scene, you can come up with a reasonable number to make an image. But when the scene is good, you don't have to invest 10,000. Those are large frames. Those are three gigabyte frames, or TIF files. A 10,000. Yeah, a 10,000 frame AVI file will easily be over three gig. So if you take 20 of those, you have a 60 gig uh, set of data to process. It takes some horsepower, some processing speed, and I don't have it on my Windows laptops. My fastest one is sitting right over here. I call it the workstation. And it ain't fast. But I don't care. Uh, I start it and then I go do something else. And I can wait for it to finish. It beats empty in the bank account. And they're, you know a computer's never fast enough. I don't care what you buy. You're going to always want to invest in something that's going to run a little faster when you find out a new processors hit the market nothing's fast enough but at 78 years of age I still have a lot of kid left in me but I also have better sense and uh, unless I figure out how to take my iMac with me when I leave planet earth for heaven unless I can figure out a way to do that there's no point in dropping money I'm not so not so keen on my kids getting it but I am real keen on my grandkids I like my children I love my grandchildren <laughs> I hope they don't listen to this they know I love them oh lordy I haven't had enough coffee. <laughs> well, there's something special about your grandchildren. Mm -mm -mm. None of them are as interested in, 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 in this stuff, astronomy, as I am. Nobody in my family is. Now my Lily, my uh, granddaughter that's just turned 13, she is fascinated by it. But she also has a lot of other things going on in her life. She's a 
an outstanding soccer player, good student, plays a lot of soccer. So does her uh, 10 year old sister. They're very good, very competitive, very aggressive. Oh, I'm real impressed with the scene right now. And it wasn't good at all an hour ago. Because I really don't. Yeah. I really rarely ever can see the details on uh, these bands. 16 remaining. Yeah, we're going to see what. You're going to see what I mean when I say there's not going to be a lot of O3 data. So this is the O3. I'm going to stretch it. And you're going to probably, if you took this first and you were new in this hobby, you'd probably say, oh, great day in the morning. I don't think I'm on the right target. I'll do a medium stretch. That was a medium stretch. I'll do a low stretch. You'd probably say, I am not on the right target. There's nothing here. There is the O3 that's there. We just need 15 hours of it. To make it pretty coffee. It's cold coffee now. It's okay. So we are currently, uh, we've taken 27 out of 50 O3, we've taken 25 out of 50 S2, and we've taken 50 out of 50 HA. Most of that was taken so far last night, and I'm just stacking it on. Tonight we're going to add some uh, RGB for stars. This is really important. This isn't so important for these wide field undersampled uh, telescopes and camera combinations. Uh, it's much more important to do this when you have a narrow field of view. But I'm gonna I'm kind of made a deal with myself to go ahead and take my stars separate and uh, regardless of what kit I'm using now. If you've got a narrow, uh, a longer focal ratio and you're looking, say, at 2,000 millimeters, then an F10, then you're taking some long exposures and those stars are going to be, if you've, you, they're either gonna probably bloated or oblong unless you are perfectly polar lined and seen as stellar. So why not take a 15 second or maybe a 20 second RRG and B or if you have a one shot color camera, just take some 10 second RGBs and uh, take 20 or, or take 50 of those and that'll just be your stars. And Russell Cronin's Cronin's star exterminator and there's other tools that exterminate exterminate will uh, extract the stars from your image but his is brilliant and then just add those stars back after you have finished processing your nebula and lo and behold you've got sharp tight colorful stars that aren't saturated oversaturated blown out Nothing worse than frustrates me than to have my stars blown out. And there's such bright points of light to start out with and nebulae are so dim that you have to take long exposures and you're bound to blow a lot of them out. So how, how do you keep from doing that? If you can, I'd like to know. So, take some short exposures. Take your longer exposed stars and trash can them. Extract them and trash can them. And then just use your uh, short exposures. Now you're going to have a cool image. 
Okay, I'm going to go over here and we'll take another look at uh, that there. We're going to take another look at, I'd like to have that as Jupiter. Uh, bing, 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 bing. We're going to take a look at uh, last look and I'm going to uh, sign off and uh, I'm going to continue imaging well into the night. Well, I'm going to image until the great red spot has uh, disappeared around to the dark side. And I'm going to say goodnight to Jupiter, and I'll probably shut this one completely down. I already have taken a mess of a bunch of Saturn. I don't need any more of those. I think I've got 20, 13. I think I've got 46 Saturns that I took. So I have plenty to uh, take about five or six at a time and run them through Windsor posts and derotate them. Same thing here. And hopefully I'll have some sharp looking, good detail, good color, planets. All right, well, that being said, I'm going to hang it up tonight and uh, hope everybody has a great rest of the evening, a great day tomorrow. And if you uh, are so inclined, click um, on the subscribe whatever thing it is down below the video to the channel and you'll be notified the next time I go I don't know if you get no if you subscribe if you get noted about I don't understand it and it's no big deal but if you want to know when I'm doing this again uh, which is about every night it's clear then do the there's a bell you know I've never seen the bell but if there's a bell and you, you ding on it or whatever, I think that's when you're notified or if you subscribe. And I always like to see a like. But uh, don't like it, don't do it. And I will catch you all later. Have a great night.